There's a war on in Syria. It's hard to keep track of all the different armed groups. You've got the Syrian army. You've got the Russians. You've got Hezbollah. And on the, on the opposition side, you've got Al-Qaeda. You've got ISIS. You've got this, the Syrian opposition that the United States supported. And then in the middle of all this fighting, and I'm talking about serious fighting with you know, serious weapons, you've got these charities trying to deliver humanitarian aid to communities that got cross, caught in the crossfire. Imagine the challenges to those charities trying to negotiate with armed groups that they run into as they're trying to get from point A to point B to deliver humanitarian aid to this town. Humanitarian aid keeps the people that can solve the conflict alive. It sustains them for a better day. I talk a lot, particularly in the Syria conflict, about what it's going to take to put Syria back together again someday. Whenever you address a conflict, whenever you try to resolve a conflict, whenever you try to help the people in the middle of a conflict, you have to stay focused on what I call the day after. The day after the conflict ends. Humanitarian aid sustains them today, keeps them uh, home or near home, so that someday they can work together to resolve their differences and put their country back together again. So in the short term, it's about saving lives and sustaining people. But I always try to remind the students and anyone I'm talking to, it's also about the day after. That without those people, we're not going to be able to put this country back together again. So one of the pressing problems today, which the students focused on in, in the task force, is how does a humanitarian aid uh, effort all those humanitarian workers, all those charities deal with armed groups. Humanitarian aid could be more effective in the field in learning how to deal with armed groups, in protecting humanitarian workers, in depoliticizing aid so that it does get to people who need it without regard to what side they're on in the conflict. We need the best and the brightest of young people in the United States and everywhere else thinking about those issues, helping to solve those issues, whether they someday go out into the field and help deliver aid or not. But that's the second reason why it's important. We need them. We need the next generation of humanitarian workers to go out there and do their best to help people in need. I always say to my students, we didn't do a very good job. It's your turn. But some of you have got to step forward and say, I'll try it.